what happens to the brain during concussion. So there's two primary phases of concussion to know about, and then we'll wrap it up with uh, how long should all this chaos in the brain take. Hey there, I'm Dr. Mark. I've worked almost exclusively with concussion and post-concussion for the past five years, and in that time I've cleared over 500 athletes, from professional ice hockey players to NCAA swimmers to teachers to entrepreneurs to everyone in between. On this channel, we discuss concussion rehab, how to get over your symptoms, and how to get back to work, school, sport, or just your regular life. So to jump right in, the two primary phases of concussion are the excitatory phase and the spreading depression. So this is also called the neurometabolic cascade of concussion. It was beautifully described by researchers Giza and Hovda back in 2001 and then again in 2014. And let's back up a bit because we said some fancy words, neurometabolic cascade, spreading depression, excitotoxicity. So neuro 101, your brain is made up of a bunch of cells and some of those cells are called neurons or nerve cells. Neurons communicate with each other by sending electrical signals between each other and that electricity is generated by electrolytes. So think sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium, things like that. And those electrolytes move across different sides of the membrane, propagate down, and causes the neurons, the nerve cells, to release other small molecules, chemicals called neurotransmitters. So you can think acetylcholine, glutamate, GABA, different things like that. And that tells the next cell what. So this is happening all the time. Pew, 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 electrolytes moving around, neurotransmitters moving around, signals going, and that creates complex movements, chaotic thoughts like that. Uh, your heartbeat, your digestion, everything is kind of generated by these impulses. So back to concussion, excitotoxicity, what does that mean? So when you reach concussion threshold, when you reach 70 to 120 Gs, 60 to 160 Gs of linear acceleration, your brain cells stretch. And so more specifically, gray and white matter in the brain are different densities. And so when you accelerate or when you rotate, that different density, it moves at different rates and they stretch and they shear. But please remember this is functional. There is no overt pathology associated with mild traumatic brain injury or concussion in kind of the purest sense. There's no damage found on CT. There's no damage found on MRI. It is a functional, clean imaging sort of injury. So what does this functional stretching and shearing do then? If it's not overt pathology, what actually happens? So when we're stretching and we're shearing, we actually open pores and leak channels that allow those electrolytes to go everywhere. So more specifically, calcium and sodium rush into the cell, potassium rushes out of the cell. That causes glutamate to release, which tells other cells to let more sodium and calcium in, which lets more glutamate out and so on. And so what happens is it causes your nerve cells to activate and excite and fire indiscriminately. And this is excitotoxicity. So in an athlete, you might see after an impact, they might have this all of a sudden ataxia, this uncoordinated movement. They might have a blank, vacant stare. They might have a like Tua with his uh, posturing or his fencing response. You might see post-traumatic seizures. You might even see an overt loss of consciousness, but this is the brain having this sort of fireworks electrical party for a brief moment. And then we get a spreading depression. Once that short-lived party is over, you gotta clean up the mess. And I tell patients to imagine electrolytes are like glitter. So you just dump glitter all over the carpet, that's excitotoxicity, and then you gotta pick it up, but you don't have a vacuum. So you actually gotta like pick this glitter up and put it back into a container. That takes a lot of time and energy. And this is how I describe, kind of simplify the energy deficit we see after a concussion. But if we wanna talk about specifically what's happening, what happens is calcium that's entering the cell in that excitotoxic mess and that soup of electrolytes, we see calcium floods the cell and it has this affinity towards mitochondria. So if you remember back to high school biology, your mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cell. They generate energy, they generate ATP. Well, flooded with calcium, the mitochondria don't work as well. And so we lose aerobic metabolism. We lose that aerobic mean of generating energy and we switch to anaerobic. Anaerobic is about nine times less efficient at producing energy. So, and also in an even more complicated like twist of events, we see impaired blood flow to the brain after concussion. So we think some of the rotational, some of that rotational aspect hits brainstem autonomic centers that alter blood flow to, to the brain. And so we have impaired blood flow and we have impaired energy production and we need to put all those electrolytes back. All these sodium potassium pumps are working hard to restore membrane potential and we can't do it. The energy demand for recovery exceeds our ability to supply it and we see a deficit. So what's the timeline for all of this? So if we start with excitotoxicity, that could last for seconds to minutes. Think of your athlete that's ataxic but then can recover and skate back to the bench. Uh, think about Tua with his posturing for a little bit and then he kind of comes to and he's out of it but he comes to. Um, so that's the excitotoxicity and then the brain begins to clean up the mess and that 
process results in the energy deficit. So usually the energy deficit, if we start at day zero here, usually about day three to five, we'll see a peak in energy deficit, which is about a 20% drop from baseline. Um, and then that'll climb back up, the energy deficit restores, metabolism in the brain restores in about 30 days. We'll see that range be like 21 to 45. So to wrap it up and give like a big picture summary of what's happening to the brain after concussion, one, your brain functionally stretches and shears. So you reach a threshold, 60 to 160, 70 to 120, depending on the research you're looking at. Your brain stretches and shears, electrolytes and neurotransmitters go everywhere, that's that excitotoxicity, and your brain has to clean that up. And so there's a resultant energy deficit from mitochondrial impairment, from blood flow deficits, you name it, inflammation. And then we see that that takes about 30 days to return to normal. But most importantly here, remember, your brain is not broken, just functionally shaken up and complete recovery is absolutely possible after a concussion. So I appreciate you sticking around. If you learned something or enjoyed this video, you might also learn something or enjoy these other videos. Until next time, I'm Dr. Mark. Thank you for watching.